Hey folks, welcome to the stream for today. We'll be going live in just one second. Uh, yes, Gouty, that is the DCO one. I will share some pictures and I'll actually show it live on stream in just a couple of minutes. Just finishing setting up here and then, uh, and then we'll make a start. Welcome, Soup Boy. Just two minutes and we'll, uh, we'll kick off. Not the only uh, prototype we'll have for you today either. We'll also have uh, the ANZ, which is uh, Dutch for by the sea keyboard by Cable Car Max. I'm just going to get that ready as well. Um, and we'll be able to uh, give you guys a demo and uh, show you what that looks like as well. Okay guys, let's uh, get me on stream and uh, you'll be able to see me. So, good evening. Uh, it's uh, just gone 8 o'clock here in the UK. Uh, and uh, today we're going to be doing a few different bits and pieces. Uh, Egla's just joined. Hello Egla. Um, we're going to be building this canoe, which you can see in front of me. Um, this is for Daniel. Uh, who's one of the MK UK regulars? Uh, he's uh, recently got his canoe uh, and he's asked me to put it together for him. Uh, so we're going to go through that build as well. Uh, Martin's joined the chat as well. Hey Martin, Bit Connect. <laughs> um, and some of the other things we're going to look at is DC01, which was uh, just uh, on the screen a few minutes ago, um, which is the prototype for mech boards for a split magnetic 60% keyboard with some cool little add-ons as well which we've got um, so I'll show those off in a little bit as well um, and then as I say we've got the ANZI prototype which is a polycarbonate prototype uh, produced in China by uh, a Chinese company for Max who runs cable car designs uh, also known as uh, Amph on Reddit uh, so he's kind of sent over the prototype uh, to well for me to take to the MKUK meetup on Saturday so uh, we've got quite a lot to go through tonight. Uh, I am on a bit of a tight schedule. Uh, I'm going to the meetup on Saturday, so uh, I've promised the missus I'll spend tomorrow night with her, uh, which means I have to finish everything keyboard related this evening, uh, including getting this build done for Daniel. So we'll uh, we'll start with a little bit of the build. What I thought we'd do is we'd uh, we'd get the stabilizers uh, all clipped and lubed and onto the board. Then we'll start to take a look at the prototypes that I've got, and then we'll finish up just by completing the build afterwards. Um, shouldn't take us too long, maybe an hour, an hour and a half. Uh, the missus isn't coming to the meetup this time, no, sadly she isn't. Uh, but I am bringing uh, Zoe and uh, Chris Swires down. Uh, I'm going to be picking, picking both of those up on Saturday. Uh, so a bit of an early start for us, but we are staying overnight on Saturday in Birmingham. Uh, so prepare to get very, very drunk, Gouty. Prepare to get very drunk. Did I test the PCB? So I had a few problems. Actually, yes. So there is one thing I do need to fix on the PCB, uh, Martin. So thanks for calling that out. Um, so this is the, the, the PCB here. Um, hope you guys can see that. That's the bottom of the board. Uh, it is a good looking, so that's the top of the board even. It is a good looking PCB. But on the bottom, uh, and I'm not sure how clearly you'll be able to see this on stream. Let's have a look, see how the... See how it focuses, but there is one diode that's got a crack on it that I do need to replace after I've built the board. Uh, right, it's just here. I'm not sure how that's going to show, but if I can get that to focus. Is that going to focus? No, so what well, focus isn't going to go. But this diode just here has got a dirty grit crack down it. Um, it's actually uh, split in two um, and uh, that key doesn't register. So I do have a spare diode. So once the stream's over, uh, I will just replace that, which will be a nice, easy little, uh, little fix. Just give me one second. Can I leave Zui? Uh, <laughs> I can't leave Zui. No, I've got to take him, got to bring him back. Uh, he's a good guy, it's nice. And we've got Fax in the chat as well, Mr. Stab Daddy himself. Um, Fax, I hope and wish you the best tomorrow. I know you've got a challenging day ahead tomorrow, so my thoughts are with you for tomorrow. And I'm really sad I'm not going to get to see you the weekend. Uh, but I am looking forward to what's in the first of me, which will be on stream in a couple of weeks as well. Um, so, yeah, 
uh, feel better soon, dude. I hope uh, everything goes well tomorrow. Okay. If my computer doesn't crash, we'll be all right. <clears throat> okay, so what we're going to do is just have a look at the, uh, the stabs. So, um... In terms of uh, layout, uh, Daniel has decided to go something very similar to what I've got. Um, so I'll show you guys what that is now. Uh, so effectively, what we have is this layout. So this is my canoe. Um, Daniel is only going for one difference. He's not going to have the stepped caps key. He's going to have a standard capsule key. Uh, but other than that, that's the layout we're going to be doing for Daniel today. Uh, nice and simple. His canoe is actually in the same colours as mine. So the, the, the teal plate we can see underneath is the same as mine. Uh, and he's got the same colour weight as well. Um, before we do that, I'll just cover off a few bits about the board. Because uh, there is some... Uh, unique parts to it, should we say? Um, there are some bits and pieces that we, uh, that I think, are quite interesting. So, whilst it's a three-part case, um, it actually isn't top mount. So, unlike a lot of customs where where the uh, the plate will screw into the uh, the top of the case, this one actually doesn't. It actually screws into the base. So, it's it's not tray mount as such, but it is bottom frame mount, I guess, something like that. Um, but yeah, it comes in three pieces, and then that's the weight, the internal parts of the weight. Um, the plate does sit nicely just in terms of where it goes. Uh, so it goes there, it's got two little rests at the front effectively to stop any lateral movement of the uh, of the rest itself, a bit of dust there. Um, and then inside we've got uh, a bit of uh, um, holes drilled out and uh, and beveled off just for the uh, the bolts to sit in and hold the, the plate in place. Um, and there's also the cutout for the LEDs as well. So these are QMK programmable LEDs. Um, they are the same as what you'd do for underglow on a, on a normal board, uh, on like a, a, a DZ60 or GH60 or whatever. Um, but they actually sit on top of the board here and they're used for an indicator light. So on mine, which I'll show you just here, I have mine bound to caps lock. So it's teal at the moment, probably can't see that very well on stream. But when I put caps lock on, it goes red. Um, just so I know which one. Um, I did have it set to layer functions, but with it being a 65%, I tend to find that uh, uh, I didn't need any particular layers on there. Um, chat seems really quiet. It's either not loading for me, or uh, or no one's talking. I'm not sure which it is. Let's just give a refresh. If someone could just post in the chat just so that I know it's working, that'd be very much appreciated. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to carry on having a look at this. Um, I'm going to put the stabs together, so I'll move the case out of the way for now. Um, and in terms of the stabs, we've just got some standard ones from Fax. Uh, so these are sent to Daniel directly. We're going to clip and loop them. These are PCB mount. Uh, sorry, not PCB. They are PCB mount, but they're just the clip-in stabs. They're not screw-in tabs. Oh, okay. So chat is working. Thanks, guys. So these are just normal. Clipping stabs, but we'll just uh, clip and move them in the same manner as normal, uh, and then we'll go ahead with putting them in the PCB. Just grab some flush cutters. So I know I've talked to a lot of you through this before, but effectively there's uh, uh, we won't need the seven U. Effectively, there's a few little things to do uh, on these. In fact, looking at these, these are not stabs from Fax. These are a cheap Chinese copy. So. Uh, I'm going to be kind to Daniel. I'm not going to put these on his board because these look crap. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him a set of my steps, which are from Fax. The fact you'll recognise these. I'm doxing myself there, but you uh, posted these out to me the other day. James, welcome to the chat. Good to see you, dude. Good to see you. Uh, so this is a couple of sets of steps from Fax. It's very odd muted. Oh, well, it's working, Chris. You, you are there. Hello, Chris. That's me waving to you, Chris. Uh, I hope you can hear me. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of these. These are going to go in the bin. Cheap Chinese stabs are not worth uh, putting in a board of that kind of calibre. Uh, Daniel can pay me for them by buying me a few beers when we are in Birmingham at the weekend. So, Daniel, if you're watching, this isn't good enough, man. This is not good enough. Poor stabs are not for a board of that calibre. So they are in the bin. So I've got some 60% uh, screwing sets here. Uh, I think I've got one 7U and uh, one 6.25U. 
Uh, yep, so we want a 6.25 for this build. The bottom row is going to be uh, 1.25, 1.25, 6.25, 1.25, 1.25, and then it's going to be the three one used for the arrow keys after that. Uh, the stabs came from Daniel himself, and he told me that they were from Fax, but they are not Fax stabs. They are not uh, GMK screwing or cherry clipping stabs. Uh, those particular ones were definitely fake Chinese stabs. And bad stabs are bad for everyone. So, so as I was saying before, I've talked you through this a few times. Uh, if uh, <laughs> laying down the standards, absolutely. Um, Talk you through this a few times. So effectively, on the bottom of the uh, the stabilizers, you can see there's uh, a number of legs. You've got a thick leg and then a thin leg. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take the thin leg off and then if you turn it over you've got a thick leg and then a thin leg underneath um so you can see there it's in kind of a hitch i'm trying to get the light i don't think this will focus i'll bring it up here oh no it's going to focus so the two thin legs are the ones we're going to take off go on focus there you go uh, and then what we're going to do is just make sure it's flush on the bottom as well uh, so this shouldn't take too long i'll try and be quick and keep the rubbish to one side. One of the other things as well when you're clipping these is they tend to fly off to the bits and pieces. So just put your thumb over them as you're clipping them. So get the clippers around them, thumb over the top, making sure you're not going to cut into your skin. And then you're not going to leave any bits flying around your room. I have vacked up my office a thousand times and found bits of stab wires all over the place. So just be careful on that front. Let's get right into the shitty stabs. So, do you know what, right? Okay, something about shitty stabs. If you use stabilizers that are third party, if you use stabilizers that are rubbish, then you ruin the board, uh, in my view. You can't make crap stabilizers good, but you can make good stabilizers badly. So, you do have to be still careful, but good stabilizers are definitely the way to go. And we've got Spine in the chat as well, and H is watching with James, so hello both. Uh, H, I'm looking forward to seeing you at the weekend again. Um, I'll try and dig out a, sp a shirt especially for you. You know, I know, I know, I know, some people don't. You want me to look at the camera? I'll look at the camera, I'll look at you, Spine, I can see you. Lube you up. Yep, yeah, uh, I'll be doing some lubing in a minute. I'm just going to clip these, which will take me another minute or so. And just before I do, is that all of them? No. So what I wanted to do is just show you, uh, that's what a clipped stabiliser looks like. Uh, there we go, it's focused. And that's what an unclipped stabiliser looks like. Uh, so you can see I've just taken off the two, and you can just see where I've flush cut the bottom as well. So it's nice and flush on the bottom. Uh, on this one, you'll see there's raised bits and bumps and standoffs. So it's just a case of making sure that they're all nice and flush on the bottom, um, just so you remove uh, any bumpiness to uh, to the stabiliser after you've finished it. Um, and the second thing is, the reason why we cut these is to stop it feeling a little bit mushy on the bottom. Arm. Now, I was having a chat with Daniel before. Uh, again, like me, he's not a fan of the Band-Aid mod, so we won't be doing that today. I know some people do like it. Um, to me, it just adds the mushiness back that you take away from... Uh, by clipping the stabs in the first place. Uh, so I would always clip the stabs if I can. <clears throat> so what we'll do now is we'll just uh, um, pop these back on. Uh, Martin, you, you swore in that one, so I can't allow that to go through. Um, but there we go. Um, and, uh, oh, Dan is Daniel watching? Is Daniel watching? He is. You missed the start. It's all right, Daniel. Don't worry. Um, I'm giving you some decent stabs, mate, because when you sent a crappy in Chinese, I'm pretty sure you told me they were from facts, and they're not. So, interpretive dance description of actions. So, for Chris Swires, what we're doing is we're going to put the stabilizers into the board. Is that all right, Chris? I hope that worked. Um, <laughs> sorry, he's distracting me there a little bit. Um, yeah, so... Thank you, Daniel, for uh, for taking a set of my stabs off me. You definitely owe me a beer for this, because uh, it's going to delay one of my builds now while I get some more of the facts. Cool. Chris has got it now. Good lad. Um, 
So what we're going to do now is put these, put these together and try and get back on track. And I know some of you guys have seen this before, but uh, it's always worth bearing in mind, I guess, as anyone new watching. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, pop the stab into the housing. Now, the front of the housing is where the wire clips in. So you can see here there's a little bit of a clip for the wire. Uh, try and get it to focus again. There you go. That's where the wire clips in at the front. And on the front of here, we've got two holes. Is that going to focus? No, it's not going to focus. So there's two holes on one side and one hole on the other. You want the side with two holes at the front and that faces towards the part of the stab where the wire clips in. And then you just take the wire, put it into the bottom of the two holes, push it in until it clicks in, and then click it into the front of the stabilizer. Just like that. And then that is there in. And then you just repeat that on the other side. Two holes to the front of the stabilizer. Nice and clip in. He says, not able to get this within himself. There we go. Second hole, bottom hole. Push the wire into the stabilizer. Clip it into the bottom of the stabilizer. And there you have a stab that works on both sides. And then just repeat for the small ones. We'll try and get this done quickly and then I can show you how we lube them. 40% uh, life means buying a whole set of stabs and just needing one. Uh, yeah, but if you can get rid of stabilizers on a board, uh, I would be a fan uh, of a non stabilizer board. That's one of, oh gosh, that's not good. Let me grab that. That is one of the reasons why the Hyper 7 doesn't have any stabilizers in it. It's my only board without stabilizers. Um, but yeah, if you can get rid of stabilizers on board, life would be uh, better. Although it probably means that Fax's bottom line took a little bit of a hit. <laughs> Fax will sell you just the one stabiliser, will. Right, okay, okay. <laughs> right, I'll see you later, Chris. Thanks for joining. I'll uh, I'll catch up with you on Saturday, and I'm sure you watch this later on anyway. <laughs> yeah, you can see my ass on different types of streams, just not on Twitch. Uh, there's no secret or shame there. That's why planks are good, obviously. Um, Yeah. I guess. Um, did I have any stamps? That's true. The problem is that Ortho Life is not for me. Um, I know that some people prefer it, but staggered has to be staggered for me. Okay, so we're almost done here. We've just got one more step to do. So again, just to recap, two holes on the front of the insert, uh, and they go towards the part where the wire clips in. Wire into the bottom of the two holes, and then clip into the front of the stabilizer. Same again on the other side, two holes to the front, front's where the wire clips in, wire into the bottom hole of the stabiliser, and then clip into the front. Nice and easy, nice and easy. So what we're going to do now is just lube these up. Uh, you knew you saw me on chat before. I never said that that's where it was, you're, you're drawing your own conclusions there. Those are your own conclusions, not mine. Uh, don't put words into my mouth. Um, so what we're going to do now is just going to loop these up. Um, I always use silicone grease, so this is dielectric grease. Uh, it's designed for car electronics, effectively, but it's super smooth. There's no particulate matter in it. Um, this tube has done me 60-ish keyboards, something like that. I don't know, 50, 60 keyboards. Still loads left in it, and it was a fiver. Perfect for stabs. So what we do, fill the cap with a little bit of dielectric grease. Pop the rest of it off to one side just so it doesn't spill. He says, trying to make sure it's not going to spill. Okay, there we go. Um, and then what we do with a relatively dry brush is we lift the stabilizer out, we put a wipe on top, a wipe on the bottom, we put a tiny dab into the back where the wire is, so you can see there where the silver wire is just poking through, tiny dab into there, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a rice sized piece underneath, so about the size of a grain of rice, and just wipe it onto the bottom of the stab when it's pushed in. Uh, repeat that on the both sides, repeat that for all the stabs, generally good to go. Uh, I'm Leeds Daniel in case you were asking me, ah Leeds Daniel, hello good sir. Uh, I hope you caught the, uh, the CA66 uh, build a couple of weeks ago. Because um, I know you were instrumental in making that happen, dude. Okay, tiny dab into the back. And then, as I said before, rice-sized piece just on the underside and wipe it through fully. 
flip it over there's enough left on the brush to not have to dip it in wipe on one side of the stabilizer wipe on the other side of the insert tiny dab into the back and then a rice sized piece underneath wiping away from the stabilizer and then with whatever's left on your brush after you've finished just wipe around the corner on the stabilizer and that just uh, helps to make sure that there's no squeak or rattle um, you're going to get rattle wear with this metal touching plastic effectively and it's not lubricated so just make sure you do that okay we're just going to go on to the next one uh, use that um, yeah anything like that will do uh, fluorescent syringe okay um, I imagine that that's a big price I can't check the link at the minute um, but yeah I've, I've used this on the car as well and I've still got loads and loads of it left um, dielectric grease is dirt cheap it's really good at the job it gets the job done and it lasts a long time as well it's not one of those things that you need to keep reapplying it doesn't wear out it's not like some lubes that evaporate uh, dielectric grease is designed to be on vehicles for a long long time so I've got some vehicles that have got the uh, original dielectric grease from the manufactured in the 70s and it still works just fine it's still just as grease like as you would expect okay almost finished on this one The other thing about it as well is it's non-toxic because it's technically food safe. So if you wanted to, you could actually uh, lick your brush, lick your fingers after you've done this. Not that it tastes very nice. Ah, now good spot, James. Good spot. They are indeed Zelios. And Daniel wants to give a big shout out to Mousy, who's uh, lubed and sorted these Zelios out for him. I'm not sure exactly what he's done. I think the 78 gram spri uh, spring swapped. Um, and there's a 100 gram one for the space. So we're going to put those in a second, but Mouse has done a good job lubing those. I've not tried them out yet, so it'll be interesting to see how someone else lubes switches. I think Daniel was originally going to do this build himself, um, and then it fell to me, uh, just so he's got it ready in time for the meetup. And there's no point in doing the last one because that's already more stabilizer than what we need. So just to recap, the layout's only going to need uh, uh, no, sorry, it's exactly the amount of us. Uh, it's only going to need a stabilizer on the space bar, the ISO enter, and the backspace, which we've got covered there. So we've got a spare just in case we need one. I'll move that out of the way. That's the lubing done, nice and easy. So we'll clip these into the PCB. And once we clip them into the PCB, we'll start taking a look at some of the uh, the prototypes that I've got on board. Uh, and we'll have a look. Yeah, Mouse is a good lad. No, no, Pushy, you've not missed the uh, the DCO one. That's coming up right after we've put these stabs into the board. Uh, so we're going to put these into the PCB. I just need to pop my dielectric grease away. Just make sure I'm not getting any leakage anywhere. Tactile's lovely, especially Zelio's looking forward to seeing how they differ from stock. Um, yeah, I love tactile switches. Tactile switches are my jam. In my clear, I've got uh, Holly Pandas, uh, which have been spring swapped and slightly lubed as well. Um, so yeah, absolutely love them. Uh, yes, this is the, um, the PCB <laughs> that was posted from Daniel to myself, and it was in a bag with just some sticks to keep it secure. I'm highly surprised that the uh, the uh, extended USB port wasn't snapped off or any of the LEDs were missing but he just put it in an envelope and sent it that way no box no padding nothing um, so I'm really surprised that it, it made it here in one piece but it did and we were able to build it and it does work it's just that one switch with a diode that I showed you earlier on that's a bit dodgy it does need to be replaced but other than that we're good uh, yeah Gowie I don't know how he got that lucky but he did uh, somehow he managed to uh, to, to, to get it in one piece. I have no idea how he managed that to this day. I, I, Royal Mail are not the best people for shipping things if you want them to be looked after. So, yeah, impressive. Uh, Bitshifter's joined the chat. Hello, Bitshifter. So for those of you who don't know, um, Bitshifter has been helping me with the uh, key map for the Hyper 7, which is the group by that I'm just finishing at the moment. So all of those boards are in the process of being shipped out. I think there's 10 more left to go in the post over the next couple of days. Um, but Bitshift has been an absolute legend and he's been helping me uh, code the QMK key map for it. Uh, so I think we're 
five layers and a thousand lines of code, something like that now. Um, it's absolutely massive is that, and uh, for those that you watched a couple of weeks ago, you'll have seen that there was a demo of the Hyper 7 and all the different functions it has. Uh, so big shout out to, to, to BitShifter, thank you very much for that dude, I really appreciate it. Uh, and I've got your plate for you here, I know you've already got your PCB, but I have got your plate for you here, so as soon as I'm back down in London, I'll, uh, I'll make sure I hit you up and uh, I'll bring that over for you. Okay, let's uh, let's get these into the uh, into the board then. Um, so as I said before, we're going to go with ISO layout. So we'll put the uh, the stabilizers in first of all for the backspace. So on stabilizers, you've got two holes in the board. You've got a larger hole. I'll show you before I do. So you've got a larger hole and then a smaller hole. So these are the ones for the backspace stabilizer. The larger hole is where the front of the wire goes because that's where you've got the hole on the. Uh, this is focus. Uh, the hole on the front, uh, the little leg, and then the back hole, the smaller hole, is where the uh, the screw goes. So I'm just going to pop these in and just push in nicely, uh, and that's in. So that's there. We just need to screw it in from the back, which we'll do in a second. Uh, the other good thing about this PCB from the bottom, if you look around the stabilizer, there's very very little place for it to short out. So there's no need for us to put any uh, any padding in there. There's no need to put any washes in there to keep us, uh, the screws off of the PCB, there's no risk of it short, and it's really, really good like that. In before ISO death threats, yes, ISO death threats are a thing on Reddit, hopefully they're not a thing on Twitch, uh, so if you don't like ISO, this probably isn't the stream for you, um, but, uh, you know, layouts are a personal thing, I've spoken about it at length before, um, I think everyone should use what they're comfortable with, I like ISO. Daniel likes ISO. Uh, some people I can see. Use whatever you're comfortable with, man. Yeah, Gary, I got uh, death threats on Reddit a little while ago. I had someone uh, tell me to kill myself because the uh, uh, the board I was using was ISO, one of the boards I took a picture of. Um, I get that there's a lot of hate towards the layouts, but the whole beauty of this hobby, right, is is the fact that you can build a board based on preference. You're building a board that suits your style, that suits the way you type, that suits your personality in some cases. You know, it's for you, it's a personal thing. So, I'm very disappointed when I see that sort of stuff. Um, it, it, it's not the way we should run the community, in my opinion. Uh, well, yeah, I'm the same. I've got, I haven't got a single board that isn't ISO except for, for 40s and things like that. Every board I have that accepts ISO has ISO on it, so I'm the same as well. Um, but yeah, you're right, it's absolutely the same thing. Absolutely the same thing. So, I'm going to put the second stabiliser in now. So again, the large hole goes where the front of the stabiliser is. Just a nice little clip in. And then push the second part in. Uh, and then the smaller part goes in where the smaller holes are, and that's where the screw is going to be. And again, on this one, we don't have to worry. There's nothing that uh, can cross over. There's no place to get a short. Uh, just double check that you're not pushing it out of the bottom. So I'm, just, I'm just literally screwing it in here. That's all I'm doing here. Just come just off stream. And then we'll put the next one in. Uh, yeah, I'm the same. I grew up using an, uh, ISO, not ANSI, and I, I really struggle to transfer to ANSI. Yeah, sorry, I'm just screwing that in. Uh, there we go, so that's a two. Uh, and the next one I'm going to put in is the space bar. So the space bar, again, you want to put the uh, the wire where the, um, the larger of the holes are uh, on the 6.25U space. We're going to go here. We're going to go here. And they just clip in like so. Make sure they're nice and flush to the PCB. Turn it over, and then we're just going to pop the screws in. You go up with Ansi and always hit the slash when you want shift, and always hit the hash when you want enter. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's one of the uh, that's one of the threats to changing the. Uh, um, Threats is probably the wrong word. That's one of the uh, one of the things that happens when you change layouts. Uh, I really struggle with with changing layouts. Ortho especially really throws me off. Um, I find split boards easier than than ortho. Uh, yes, lo-fi beats are running in the background. I thought that might be too quiet for you guys to hear. Um, you can probably see the equalizer going on there though. 
Um, so that's all the stamps in the board. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the switches in, but we're going to have some teasers first. Uh, and just to show you what a difference Luby makes, absolutely no rattle. You know, so yeah, that's uh, that's different. And all the stamps are lovely and super smooth. So it's definitely worthwhile leaving these stamps if you're going to do a build for the sake of an extra two minutes. It's well worth the uh, the effort. So with uh, with much. I do about nothing. Before we go on to the building the rest of it, uh, I do want to share with you the uh, a couple of prototypes. So we'll talk about the Mechboards one first. Um, it's the DC01. Uh, was this put on the vendor channel on the RMK Discord? Or are you a vendor? I'm not a vendor. No, not a vendor at all. Uh, I'm just just a random guy who likes to build keyboards. Um, but I'm good friends with uh, David who runs Mechboards. Um, and uh, and that's it. So if someone else has put it on there, it's Mechboards Dave, it's not me. Um, he may have put the link on there, I don't know. Um, no idea. Uh, I'm not on Discord at the minute, so I can't check. Um, but what we are going to do is we're going to talk about the DC01. So the DC01 is a 60% split keyboard uh, with some add-ons as well that's been designed by Mechboards. Uh, the PCB has been designed by Yankar, uh, and then it's been produced in a factory, I don't know where. Um, David contacted me a couple of weeks ago and he was short of a key set to actually fill out the board. And knowing that I got a bit of a collection, I offered to lend him some keys to cover it. Um, and that kind of led David to, to mention that he couldn't make it to the meetup, and I said, well, I can go. And then one thing led to another, and a couple of days later, I've got the DCO one in my hands, which is really, really nice. Um, so... What we'll do is we'll show you it on screen. Uh, it has got a couple of add-ons as well. Um, so I'll just lift it in and you can have a look at it. So this is the DC01. Um, so it looks just like a normal 60. Uh, you've got two ports on the back. That is for the cables and then you can have a connector cable as well. Um, the board is split. So it does like the VEA. All perfect like that. Uh, the board is magnetic as well. You can't, I can't really show you with this bit, but it is magnetic, so you can probably see when I pull it apart, there's uh, a bit more magnetic to it. Uh, but this is the board, it's it's lovely. It uses pogo pins on the inside, so you can see here we've got the pogo pins uh, to connect, and that's the other connector as well. Once it is connected and plugged in, you only need a cable in one side if you're using it in connected mode. So if you're using it like this, one cable in either side will do the job, the keyboard will work, and you can type as normal. I didn't build this by the way, so don't blame me for the clicky switches, it's not me. Hi Chris, thanks for joining. I can see you on here as well, the other Chris. <coughs> um, and suddenly OG. <laughs> well, not quite like that, not quite like that, but yeah. Um, so, the, the, I mean, this, 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 this thing's lovely. I, I genuinely really like it. I wouldn't have put the switches in myself. I'd have gone for something linear probably on this board. Um, but it is really nice. So it does stick together with magnets. You can have it split. Um, just flipping it over on the bottom, you've got four feet on each board because you want them split. You want to make sure it's fully stabilised. Plate that mounts into the bottom. Um, the other interesting thing as well is that the, the plate itself is actually, uh, let's see if I can show you this here, um, it's actually an integrated plate into the case, so the, the plate itself that the switch is sit into is integrated uh, into the actual case as well, it's all CNC from one block. Uh, no, it's this is a prototype, Chris. It's uh, it's called the DCL one It's made by Mechboards.co.uk. Uh, um, I'm just lucky enough to be able to have it. Uh, wait, you haven't seen the party piece of this board yet, so just just hold your horses before you uh, before you get too excited. Um, so I'm just going to mine this out of the way for a second, uh, just while I show you this next bit. So this is the board. As I say, it clips together. It is magnetised. Uh, it works like that. Um, now the other thing that you might have noticed is. When I was holding it up, there's actually pogo pins on the outside of the board as well. Why would you have pogo pins on the outside of the board? Well, the reason this has got pogo pins on the outside of the board is because it also has this, which is a numpad. Now the numpad can click on magnetically onto the side, and that's it connected. So you've got a full board, one cable, powers it all. Alternatively, you can split it, have two cables. Power it off. It's really cool. And then the next part of the piece is that it also has an arrow block. Picking up the screws with the magnets there. Um, and again, you can clip this onto the side. And then you've now got an arrow block, an unpad, and a 60% keyboard that can be split. Absolutely lovely. But here's the really cool part. 
your left hander. You don't want to use those on that side. You want to use them on the other side of the board. Well, guess what? Now you are. You use them on the other side of the board, just like that. Or if you want your arrow keys on one side, your numpad on the other. There you go. Mix and match whichever around you want it. It is absolutely amazing, is this. And the thing works as well. I was using it earlier on to type and send some messages on Discord. Uh, being a prototype, it's got a couple of bugs, but nothing that will get ironed out. I think the biggest thing for me at the minute is the magnet placement. There's just a little bit of play in it before you get the snap off. But um, yeah, yeah, it actually works. Yeah, um, yeah, it actually works. If I, uh, I don't have a cable. If I do have a cable, I'll, uh, I'll show you it working. There we go. <clears throat> so, it's funny you should mention that the function key row is something that I've uh, I've thought about, um, and I've also mentioned it to, to, to Dave already. So, if I can get this cable in, sorry, the, the problem I've got here is that the cable is uh, really really fat, and the whole isn't. It's not a custom cable or anything like that. Come on, this is embarrassing. I can't put a cable in a board. There we go. Okay, you probably heard it connect. Uh, where can I type? Sorry, ignore the spam. But there you go. There you go. All working. Uh, and then, as I say, you can connect it, uh, and it still works. And you can work like that. You can put this, the arrows over at the far side. Um, yeah, it all all just works. One one cable. If you split the board, obviously you have to use two cables. Uh, I'll push it across. But yeah, fully working. So this is the prototype. Uh, I think it's going to go into group by soon. Um, I, I, I've given some small little bits of feedback on the board, things I'd like to change. I do find it a little bit hollow. If I do a bit of a typing test, you might be able to hear. There's a tiny bit of echo in there, but a little bit of padding will soon fix that. And David's already said he's going to look into sorting it out for the retail boards, either by making the base a little bit thicker or putting some padding in there as standard. Um, but yeah, absolutely love the bit of kit, and I'm really happy and thankful that Dave's let me uh, let me borrow it. Uh, yeah, I think a function row was, I, my suggestion was basically just two rows that would sit at this side, so something like, uh, for me, uh, I'd, I'd just have two rows like that, like one side, uh, a little bit like the uh, the Revo K, uh, Mini or the K-Mac Mini or wherever else there is out there. Um, but yeah, absolutely love this thing. Um, it's quite hefty, it's not it's not heavy board, it's fairly light, but it's still got a bit of chunk to it, a bit of weight to it. Um, and yeah, it's interesting. Uh, one of the things I haven't tried yet that I might try out later on is whether the board actually works if you do it that way around. But that'd be that'd be a bit crazy. But I might just try it for for completeness. But yeah, that's the DC01. Uh, I love a bit of kit. And for those of you coming to the UK meetup, you'll be able to see that in person uh, on Saturday. Uh, there'll be a bit of a DC01 stand where you'll be able to have a look at that. Second batch of noodles didn't get burned. I'm glad you sorted your noodles out, and I'm glad they were uh, they were enjoyable. Um, the second thing I wanted to show you today is the ANZI. So this is a prototype made by Max from Cable Car Designs, um, and it's a polycarb board. Uh, uh, so we'll show this on stream. I'll do a bit of unboxing. Uh, so again, you can tell I haven't built this either because it's not ISO, <laughs> but it does support ISO. Um, and I know Push has already seen this face to face as well. Um, uh, you could buy two boards of the DCO one and put them together, Martin. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how many you can connect together before you run out of power. That's probably a question for Jan. But uh, this is the DCO one, uh, a polycarb board. Um, again, this will be at the meetup as well. Uh, this is the prototype. Uh, the block is going to change. It's going to be 0 0.25 instead of 1U. Uh, name badge at the top. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it does say NZ on it. Um, a massive, uh, a massive weight. Yeah, I didn't build it. Uh, so it's you know it, it's it's anti but hey not my choice not my board. Um, so this is the weight on the bottom. Got upside down. Uh, a nice wave design. Uh, anti is Dutch for by the sea, uh, from what I understand. Um, now the polycarb on this is completely unfinished uh, for two reasons. One, Max wanted to see what the machining and tooling paths looked like on the boards uh, before I had it sandblasted or anything like that. I think the production ones are going to have a, a lovely sandblasted finish that'll be like the polycarb singer I shared a couple of weeks ago. Um, but yeah, it's a lovely, lovely little board. ISO reporting for DEUT. Yes, I like that. Well done, well done. <clears throat> 
Um, so yes, yeah, so this is a lovely looking board. Uh, it's built with um, Tangerine C3 switches, which have been lubed. Um, almost identical to my polycarbonate Singer. Um, again, this, I'll do a bit of a typing test for you. Sounds absolutely lovely. Um, it's a really good looking board. It's solid, it's a prototype, but to be honest, if I had the option, I would be daily in this. The plate is brass. Uh, it does spot up to a three millimeter brass plate as well. So the, the way and the way that works is the plate gets thicker after after it's uh, embedded into the uh, the uh, the gasket here. So yeah, uh, yeah, it's not clicky. These are linear uh, switches, but they are absolutely lovely. Really nice to type on. And I'm a tactile man, but I absolutely adore these switches. Uh, I think they're the only linears that I really truly like, um, but this is a lovely board. Um, so yeah, so another exclusive. Again, this will be at the meetup on Saturday. Um, that this will be with my boards. The DCO one will be with me, but on a separate um, little bit of stand because it's uh, it's mech board stuff. Um, as far as I know, Max isn't going to do much of a public one of this. It's going to be quite a small group buy. So um, yeah, so we'll see. So there we go. So if you've got any questions about either of those boards, if you hit me up, let me know. Let me know what you think. Um, I'd be interested in your thoughts and feedback, especially on the DCO one. David is looking for feedback, so if you've got any feedback for him at the meetup as well, just feel free to let me know. Bobby answers on a postcard, that kind of stuff. Um, oh yeah, Push has pasted his uh, Anzi typing video, so that's exactly the same board that I've got here. He, he borrowed it off Max a couple of weeks ago. Um, so yeah, so do go check that out. Uh, we've got Pi Park in the chat as well. Hi, man. Good to see you again. Nice to see you catching up with us. Um, how many boards am I taking to the meetup? I'm taking two that aren't mine and then four that aren't mine. So I'm taking six boards in total. Plus, I might take my little macro pad just because it's fun. Uh, I posted this on Reddit a couple of weeks ago, but this is my uh, escape pad. Um, it's a, uh, I might take this just for a little bit of a, a, bit of a joke pad. Um, this is a uh, Tai Chi pad. Uh, it's hot swap, uh, underglow. And it has a five millimeter plate, uh, which is um, also uh, integrated into the case. So it's um, uh, it's, it's it's a real fun little bit of kit. Uh, amazingly difficult to program, but uh, once you get around that, it's a really fun little bit of kit. So I'll probably take that as well, but I don't really class that as a board. And then the only other thing I've got to take is a prototype prototype of the postal board, which is a little PCB that's used for hand wires, which I teased on stream last week sometime. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to take that as well. Uh, did you miss the ANSI to tobbles? Look, here, here, here's the ANSI. Yeah, there it is back. That's the ANSI uh, with the, the nice wave icon on the bottom. This is one of one. Um, the, the, the production boards are going to have one of however many there are. I think it's going to be 10, uh, but it's going to be a very limited group buy. Um, so, yeah, here we go. Uh, yeah, it's actually here. It's in my hand, Toby. Um, you missed the DCO one as well, Toby, but there you go. Next escape pack. Wait, that's not actually an escape pack. They're literally all from key sets. Um, uh, yeah, I did do a bit of competition, but no one could get them all right. And everyone got all of them right, apart from this little guy in the middle. Uh, everyone said it was from uh, Miami Nights, and sadly, it's not. Um, it's from GMK Solarized Dark Coloured Mods, but nobody guessed that. So nobody won the prize. Uh, so the prize is actually going to be at the meetup as a bit of a giveaway, um, which is uh, a key forge. Uh, artisan. So yeah, so that's going to be at the uh, the meetup for a giveaway. But hey, these things happen. Right, uh, back to building the board. Yeah, you were just about to say it. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, looks like we've got Doggo on stream. Come on then. For those that you wanted to say hello to the dog, here she is. Looking rather tired and grumpy with herself today. There we go. <laughs> There we go. She's gone. She's a lovely girl. She's a really good girl. Right. Okay. So back to back to the job at hand. So this is the PCB. This is the plate. We've got the stabilizers in the right position. It's now time to uh, to build the board. These are the uh, the switches that Mousy's done for um, Daniel. Uh, they've been done with. 78 gram sprit springs. These are the stock ones, just pop back in the bag. Uh, there's a 100 gram uh, switch for, there we go, 100 gram switch for space. And then here's the rest of them uh, as well. So we're just going to go in, put a few of these in. What we'll do is we'll try and get a few in at first. Um, I have heard on the canoes, the uh, 
the plate mount switches are quite tight so if the first few seem really really tight what we'll do is we'll clip them all really quickly and we'll only keep the plate mount ones on um, on the keys that don't have too much stabilization so around here um, we'll make sure we clip them there probably around the space as well we won't clip them and just here as well we'll, uh, we'll make sure they're not clipped We've got Gimli, is, have we? Is Gimli in the chat? Oh, the dog. Gim right, okay, sorry, yeah. Um, what have we got saying going on here? The dog is called Gimli. No, the dog's called Gigi. Uh, she's called Georgie, and we've shortened it to Gigi. Um, so that's, that's the dog's name. Uh, I'm not finished yet. No, I'm not finished yet. Um, I don't have wine or anything like that. I've just got a glass of Coke, sadly. Um, yeah, it's just one of those. Things. Oh, there's my wife in the background just telling me that I'm false advertising. It's not Coke, it's Pepsi. Uh, I do apologise. It's still a cola based drink, Ellie. She's not listening. Oh well, there we go. So, what we're going to do is put a few of these switches in. We'll see if it is really tight. If it is, we'll clip them. Um, and then, what we'll do is we'll go around. Um, I'm glad you were able to see the, uh, the DC01 quote. Uh, I have got a, an imager album that uh, I've taken some pictures for Dave, so I will share that link around uh, as well. Uh, in fact, actually, Pusher, I, I shared that link with you. If you want to pop that link to my imager in the chat, please do, uh, and let everyone share. And we've got the dog around again. She's saying hello again. Okay, so let's get some of these switches put in here. So I'm just going to put this one into the plate first. So pretty tight. That's in the plate, nice and easy. And then what we'll do is we'll just pop the plate back on. And then we're just going to align the switch and then just pop it into place. And that went in really easily, actually. So the rumours of these being difficult to put in may be exaggerated a little bit. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to go in the next corner. And then just work our way across the, uh, across the board. Making sure we push them into the plate first. Make sure they're clipped into the plate and then push through into the base of the PCB. And what we'll do is we'll just put a few of these in and then we'll start to build up the rows. Try and take it slowly, steady. Make sure we don't make any mistakes. Uh, and then we'll just be really careful when we come to the bottom row uh, where we've got a little bit uh, of a different layout going on where there's a couple of options. Just make sure we get the, the keys in the right place. I did make a mistake when I was building Mel's clue board and gave her a, a shift key that didn't fit, so I had to do all that after the stream. Very embarrassing, uh, but these things happen. Oh, this one doesn't even want to stay in. So I think the, the issue where people had said that they were uh, tight into the PCB has been fixed, but the plate is really tight. The clipping into the plate is tight. Um, Uh, doesn't everyone drink while they make keyboards? Makes solar and easier. Uh, I would do if I wasn't on stream. Uh, I think there's Twitch rules against drinking on stream, uh, but sometimes I will have a beer while I'm building a keyboard. Yeah, nothing wrong with a good beer. Um, sometimes it's nice. Uh, what's aluminium? The plate? Uh, yeah, the plate is aluminium. It's just anodized aluminium, but the colour is lovely. You'll see mine at the meetup gyms. The, the camera doesn't, and the light doesn't do it justice. The, the teal uh, colour that it is, you'll absolutely adore. Um, it's a little bit more green than teal, um, but it is really nice. This switch is going in nicely. How much long am I streaming for? Just until this is done. Um, probably in that hour at most so what we'll do is we'll just quickly put these in we'll solder it or screw it together we'll have a look at it but it may be another hour um, probably won't be any longer than that I wouldn't have thought if that's alright put it in a water bottle neither my wife nor Twitch will care yeah it's it's vodka though I'm not really a vodka man uh, maybe gin I'll do a bit of gin a bit of rum pretend it's coke that's, that's not a bad idea So again, we're just pushing all these switches in, um, and then what we're going to do is once it's switched in, we'll, we'll do a bit of soldering and we'll, uh, we'll get it all tidied up. Um, but these switches just go in. Make sure you're putting them in the right way around, so you want to make sure your pins are aligned. Um, the interesting thing about the uh, the Canoe PCB is it doesn't actually support that many layouts. It supports ANSI and ISO, and then a few different bottom rows, and that's it. But it does mean that we don't have a Swiss cheese PCB. Um, oh, Chris, Chris is back. Yes, <laughs> um, he appreciates the plate colour and he's going to have a drink for me. Thank you, thank you, Chris. Uh, here's some more interpretive dance 
for you. There you go. Uh, Chris asked me earlier on to do uh, some interpretive dance because he sat with his wife and he couldn't have the volume on. Um, yeah, Chris Swire is watching the stream live, something that's never happened before. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he broke his record, yeah. He's not listening to it, so is it really watching if you can't hear me? Isn't half of it the reason why? So as you can see, we're starting to get closer now with these switches. It's hard to put the switches on and keep the camera in focus for you. And uh, just pop one in. It's got a bent pin. Pop one in here. That's the back space. And then we'll just start filling up the board now. Oh. I'll grab that switch in a second. That's just me being overzealous and pushing a bit too hard and pivoting the board. So the, the, the plate itself is the right thickness, but the interesting thing here is that they're really tight. If you see that, they just pop out. So the plate's really, really, really tight, but the PCB isn't. Um, it's interesting. Can't separate the Chris's. No, no, the Chris's are always together. Uh, Chris, you should uh, actually come over to the UK for the meetup on Sunday. It'd be great to get Chris and Chris in the same room. Uh, the two Chris's. So still just building up, making sure we've got all the switches in place. When I built my uh, my canoe with uh, Holy Pandas, it was uh, a little bit different. Those. Um, the panda switches didn't have this pop-out problem. Or maybe my board just doesn't have the same tolerance on the plate. I don't know. I don't know. Building up a bit of steam now. Getting going. I will say though, from picking up these switches and pressing them as I'm pushing them in, they do feel absolutely lovely. So Mousy's done a great job of leaving these switches. They feel great. Um, and I know it's not really representative when they're not fully into the board properly, but they do feel good. They do feel really good. Want him to go to Birmingham, didn't know you were so cutie. Yeah, we want everyone to go to Birmingham. It'd be amazing if we could get a really, really big meetup done in the UK. Get a lot of our uh, American compatriots over. Uh, I know Olivia has uh, expressed interest in coming to a UK convention at some point. So hopefully we'll get her over at some point. Oh, so cruel. Oh, okay. Um... Well, Birmingham's not the best place, but it's not the worst. At least you didn't have to come to Leeds. That was uh, an experience. So again, we're going to go normal caps lock on this board, uh, not stepped caps, which would be my preference. Um, that isn't properly. <clears throat> uh, Daniel wanted normal caps lock, not not stepped. So I'll just. Two rows done now, in just case of filling it in in the middle, and then we'll work out the bottom row. Freaking Leeds. You were, you enjoyed Leeds, Toby. You enjoyed the drinking games afterwards. That was fun. A bit of uh, some dirt on this one. I think we're going to leave that switch. There's a little bit of uh, dirt. I think these have been desoldered actually uh, from something else. So we will check the dead keys afterwards. Sometimes when switches have been desoldered, I've had bad experiences with them being a little bit dead. He <laughs> used rubbish stabs and uh, and normal capsule. He's a heathen. Yes, he is. He is. Uh, the the stabs were of significant uh, dissatisfaction to me. I must admit. So I think. I know I spoke about this earlier, but the thing with stabs is, if you're going to build a board that's this expensive, that's you know going to be a nice typing experience for you, you want to be an end game, um, and you want to build it your way, that's great, build it your way. But for the love of God, don't spend four, five, six hundred dollars on a keyboard, and then skimp on the sake of nine dollars for some stabilizers. You know, it, 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 you get what you pay for with a lot of things, and using good stabs is always a good thing. But, Yes, my wife. I need to. Oh, my missus is doing the uh, the food shopping ordering. Uh, whatever we need for the uh, the meal I'm going to cook tomorrow. What am I doing? Uh, I'm not making it. <laughs> I'm going to do that chicken bolognese, chicken chili thing. Um, so just some celery, carrots, onion, uh, and that's it. That's all I need. 
we'll get everything else. Okay, what time? Uh, lunch time ish. I think I'll pick it up at lunch time. Okay. My wife's just literally ordering the food shopping for tomorrow. Uh, and as I'm away at the weekend, I promise that I'll cook her a nice meal tomorrow night. So, chicken chili is where it's at. So, we're getting there now with the board. As you can see, we're almost filled in. Uh, where everything's going to go. That switch has got a bent pin, I can feel it. Uh, no, it's just got something on the pin, so we're not going to use that one. Um, I probably don't have time to clean the legs, so I'm hoping that we've got enough switches here. It's looking like we're going to be pretty close. So I've just got a few more to do and then we'll work out what we're doing on the bottom row. Looks like we are going to need all of these switches and it doesn't look like there's any spare. Jay, what's my favourite food? Anything spicy. Indian cuisine uh, would be absolutely right up there. Um, on top of that, anything that my wife makes um, would be my favourite food. Is that a good enough diplomatic answer? Is that a good way to do it? Do I prefer USB-C or USB mini? I prefer USB mini. Uh, and the reason for that is because USB-C is overkill, it's pointless, it's not needed. Um, I, I just don't, I don't see the reason for using it if I'm completely and utterly honest. Um, I've never found a board that forces me to use it other than the Pearl. Um, so yeah, so I wouldn't use it unless I had to. Just realized we don't want that on space. USB-C messes up more than USB mini. Uh, it probably does. Oh, oh, pizza. Yeah, nice pizza. Uh, yeah, I think the thing with USB-C is it's new technology. Yeah, it's got faster bandwidth and God knows what else you want to tell me about it. Um, but it's not being taken over by the majority of people yet. And until it becomes more mainstream, until it becomes the de facto standard, there's no point in adopting it for devices that don't use it um, or don't need to use it. You know, let's keep things cheap. Let's use the standards that are there. Let's use what everyone's used to. Everyone can keep on using the custom cables and everything else that they've got. Um, I, I, I just don't see the need to change just yet. Um, not all change is good. Um, not all change is bad either. But you know you've got to keep these things in uh, in mind when you when you're looking at that sort of stuff. So we're just going to put in the bottom row now. So we're going to go 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, and then we've got a 6.25 for the space. I think that's uh, that's right in terms of the keys. Let me just check against my PCB. Uh, yeah, that's right. And we're going to put this one in space. This is a hundred gram one for space. Uh, like the grip on the cable to the connector grip. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. It does. Yeah, I've seen uh, I've seen problems with that on uh, on some some cables. Um, I think the other thing as well is that USB C is harder for. Uh, uh, custom cable makers to use. I think they, it, it's harder for them to make um, make the cables directly. So I'm, I'm not sure if you can see, but there's some crud just on these stems. You see that little bit of black. It's actually on the stem itself. So I'm just going to try and uh, try and clean that up with some flush cutters. Um, all the mouse has done a good job on the switches. It hasn't cleaned them up very well. And to be fair, I think he might have actually told me that he hadn't done this. So. In the interest of getting the uh, the board ready for Daniel quickly, uh, some corners were cut. Okay, that's that one done. I think that goes there. Let's just off it up against mine. Yep. And then one more switch. Again, we've just got some crud on this one, so we're just going to trim this off. catch up with the chat in a second. 
I'm sure this is lovely watching me cut some crud off of a couple of switches. Mini HDMI life, yeah, you could do mini HDMI, HDMI. that would be interesting. Uh, again, let's just check that's in the right spot. Yeah, so that's all right, so that's all the right layout. That's everything in the correct spot, that's all these switches in place. What we're gonna do now is just quickly solder this together. Um, and I'm gonna have to order some more solder. Tobbles, you need to get your uh, solder ready. Cut me off a couple of meters of it because I'm gonna be down at some point next week. Um, and I'm gonna need some solder because I'm running out here. Again, using the TS100. Uh, this is this heats up super quickly. <clears throat> it's freaking ready. Good, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, USB-C is harder for the cable makers to make because it's difficult to solder have a hand. From what I understand, it's no harder than doing a lemo, but I've never done a lemo connector either, so I'm not I'm not 100% sure. Uh, you need more flux to do it, right? Okay, I've never tried soldering. My soldering is mediocre at best. Um, it does the job. It's not the prettiest. Um, so I'm just cleaning the soldering on there. I'm not doing anything rude. <clears throat> So everything's looking okay. All of the PCBs, all the switches are into the PCB correctly. Uh, everything's looking all neat and tidy. If you look there, you can see that the gap is consistent. Uh, don't forget these are Zelios. There we go. So we've got a little bit of standoff on them, naturally. That's all looking okay. Doesn't look like any pins are missing or anything like that, or any folded bent pins. I think we're good to solder. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do one in each corner first, and then once we've done one in each corner, forget this two points to every switch. Once we've done one in each corner, what we'll do then is we'll just go around and do the rest of the board. Come on. Those two done, just turn this around now. And then we're going to do this bottom one. One thing you always must do when you're soldering switches as well is before you solder one pin, make sure that both pins are visible. Uh, I've done it before where you've ended up with a uh, uh, one of the legs soldered and the other legs being folded under, and you can't, you have to desolder it then. Um, in terms of soldering temperature, I do it at 300 and, oh, flipped over, 348 degrees. Uh, I think it's set to 345, but it's just running a little bit hot. Um, yeah, uh, so, so roughly 345 to 350. I don't usually go above that. Um, if I can get lower melting point solder, I will go lower. Uh, I know some people that do solder on around about 180. Uh, some other people who are good at soldering, such as Martin, I know he solders at close to 400. Um, so it just depends on what you're comfortable at what kind of temperature your solder can handle, uh, all of that kind of good stuff. A lot of soldering is just practice though, it's just getting used to it and doing it. So I'm just going to solder in the bottom row now. Just take it steady, no need to rush. Make sure you're not getting any cold solder joints. So you want the solder to look like a bit of a teardrop, just leaking slowly onto the uh, onto the pins. You don't want to make sure you've got too much solder, uh, and you don't want too little either. If in doubt, add more. It's better to have too much solder than not enough. Uh, I did see one board a couple of weeks ago. Um, where someone had just just barely tagged the uh, the pins of the legs to the the outside of the pads, uh, and the, the board wasn't working. I know Martin, you fixed that one for the guy actually. Um, oh, the the PCB mask itself, the whole board is absolutely beautiful, Toby. Um, it is one of those boards that's just super super nice. Um, the design aesthetic on the on the PCB is is, is outstanding. Okay, so this is almost the bottom row done. Just a 
come out to do. And this is one board that we're definitely going to make sure we clean up with isopropyl alcohol afterwards. Uh, it's definitely worthwhile cleaning it. For those of you who haven't seen a canoe in real life, it is one of the nicest boards and the heftiest feeling boards. It's not particularly heavy, but it just feels solid. And I think, as well as the design, that makes it worth the money. Mask logo better than silk screen? Uh, in my opinion, yeah. Uh, why not? Why not? I think uh, mask logos look great. They look stunning. I mean, just look at that. It's just, it is a good looking PCB. Where's the Swiss cheese here? I, I do hate Swiss cheese PCBs. This isn't particularly bad though. It's got two options for most of the keys on the bottom row. Um, option of split left shift or full left shift and ISO or anti enter. And that's it. That's all the options it's got. It doesn't have any other choices or, or options. But if you get sold on it, you just don't get sold on it. Simple as that. I've done all right there. A little bit of flux around it, but I'll soon wipe up. Dead easy. Uh, is it all alu? Uh, the canoe is all alu, yes. The weight is aluminium as well. There are apparently some brass uh, ones out there, and I have uh, got somewhere in the post. Um, I've got a clear weight coming from my canoe. Unfortunately, it's not going to be there in time for the, the meter, but I've got a polycarb weight coming from my canoe uh, from a, a, f a friend who's had that made for me. Um, so I don't think there are any others uh, in terms of any other options. There is the Fanu, the fake canoe. Uh, they do offer a, a copper uh, and a brass bottom. Um, so, and I believe that they use the same design files as what's on the actual canoe as well. So they should fit directly. They should be a direct equivalent. Um, I haven't bought a Fanu, so I don't know. For definite, I don't have one. I haven't seen one in real life yet. I'm not sure if they've even been produced yet, so that'll be interesting to see when they do. Brass my bottom, Daddy. Uh, yeah, we've seen the kayak as well, Gary. Yes, uh, I actually know Cody quite well, who's uh, who's produced that. Um, we speak quite a bit on Top Clack and uh, on Keep Talk as well. Um, he's he's a good lad, uh, and he shared with me canoe. Uh, the kayak uh, when we were both waiting for our canoes so we we got our canoes in a private group by uh, that was promised to deliver in a number of weeks and actually took just under a year to deliver um so we were kind of feeling the frustration and that's where coda's design of the kayak came from uh, he just wanted his canoe so he he designed the uh, the kayak uh, had it produced in wood um, and actually on my discord server we're looking at getting a, a round produced for some people in the uk so if anyone's interested in that, just let me know. Uh, I think Bledin's going to join in with us. Bledin's been looking to manage it for the MK UK server. Um, so we're going to try and join forces and increase our buying power uh, and try and get some better prices by merging the two together effectively. Uh, they'll still be run separately. Um, we'll still keep ours uh, separate, but in terms of just the order itself, uh, we'll make sure they go through together. So just working the way through. Hey, we've got a Holland on. Uh, I recognise your name from uh, from MK UK, dude. So it's good to see you again. Thank you for joining. Hopefully, you're going to be at the meetup at the weekend as well. What am I building today? I'm building a canoe. This is a canoe PCB, as it says right here, canoe. Um, so this is the. Uh, canoe that Daniel's bought recently uh, and he's asked me to build it uh, and it will look something similar to mine a uh, different key set I think he's going for um, I've got solarized dark on mine uh, but I think he's going to go for something a little bit different I don't know what yet he's going to surprise me at the weekend I suspect uh, I've yet to decide what I'm going to charge him for, for, for doing this build as well uh, um, the silly boy hasn't agreed uh, a price or anything not that I'm going to charge him money of course because I, I would never charge for building a board it's it's, it's not worth it. I, I get too much enjoyment out of doing it. Um, but I do think uh, we have to decide on the right number of beers that you should buy me at the meetup. So, uh, votes in chat. Uh, how many beers do you think Daniel owes me for building his bot and giving him some GMK screwing stabs because he supplied crappy Chinese off brand stabs? What, what do you think that should be? How many beers do you think that's worthy of? Three. Three beers. Okay, okay, interesting. Interesting. Hey, Lucky Mouse. Uh, this, is this Mousy? Oh, it's Mousy. Mousy, the switches. Yes, the switches are great, actually. They're really nicely looped. Uh, thank you for doing them for Daniel, dude. Um, 
but they look great. The couple that had bits and pieces on the legs, I think you mentioned that to me in a message, uh, so they did need a little bit of clean up. Um, that didn't take long. Uh, there was only two that needed uh, clean up. I think I left a couple of the other ones off the board. And I've used the 100 gram one on his space bar as well. Um, so they feel really nice. Uh, I haven't typed on them on the board yet. Uh, they're all in place though. Uh, they just need to be soldered in, which we're doing right now. And then we'll have a look and see how it is. I probably won't put any caps on to do a full typing test, but I'll try and do a little bit of a typing test versus the Holy Pandas in my canoe uh, as a direct comparison next to each other as well. Uh, so we're about halfway through the board now, the bottom row and the first row done. Uh, so we're just going to try and fly through the next two rows, then do the last row. Um, and then we'll, we can start to put the board together and put the case together. And I'll just show you again when we get to that point actually, just how how different the case is. Because it's it, it's a three part case, the plate actually screws directly into the case rather than it being tray mount. But it is a bottom mounted um, PCB, uh, so it actually screws into the bottom of the uh, of the case rather than the top but on the perimeter so it's not a true tray mount it's it's kind of an interesting design it's the only board i've seen that does that oh it's the second set you've done for him oh nice nice well done yeah um i've i've never sold this, uh, never sold it i've never um lube switched for anyone other than myself um, but i'll be interested if you're going to be at the meetup on saturday to get your thoughts on some of the switches i have done myself uh, so i'll show you some of my boards and, and you can see what you think um, for the, those of you who have joined as well, you have missed the teasers of the DCO one and the ANZ boards, but I'll probably show you them again at the end if anyone's still interested, if anyone does want to see that. Uh, we'll get the board built first, we'll get this uh, this uh, this board finished, um, but then we'll do some more showings of them if anyone's interested. Uh, Martin said not forgotten to do something. Oh, come on, spill the beans, what have you not forgotten to do? Can't keep us all in suspense like that. It's probably just me that's not really in the chat because I'm uh, trying to concentrate on this. But if there's some gossip, I want the gossip. Tell me the gossip. We're starting to get there now. Well over half of the board done. Just when sold, and just remember, just try and keep it to about a, a, you know, a, a drop shaped size, uh, and it wants to be a teardrop shape, and it wants to be going into the uh, into the board. You don't want it to be sanded up. Martin's making. Oh, you're making the G8300 3000 replacement PCB. Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, the 1800 one. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Nice. Are you going to do the 4100 as well? Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I'd be interested to see that. Feel free to. Uh, let me see when you could do that. I would be interested in the 1800 actually as well because I have got a TX 1800 that I dismantled a little while ago and it is going to feature one of my build streams at some point um, and we're probably going to do something a little bit different with it but the Liku PCB that it came with whilst it looks nice it isn't functionally the best keyboard uh, PCB that I've used and it does rely on the use of Jigon software. Now I know that Querdanka who was watching earlier on, I think he's had to leave now, he has converted some of the Liku PCBs to QMK but it means you need to use a different flasher and all of that kind of stuff. So Martin, if you're uh, if you're going to have a PCB that will fit it and that will be QMK compatible, I am more than happy to fund getting a couple of those. Uh, if you want me to help sort it out with you. Just let me know and we'll sort something out afterwards if that's of interest. Just in terms of other things that are going on as well, uh, I think there's a few other projects that I've got ongoing at the moment. Um, so I will be sharing those on stream recently, uh, in, the, in the recent weeks, in the coming weeks. Uh, one of the next builds that I've got planned is actually a prototype Noxry board, which is the Noxry X75, which was a, a group buy that didn't run a couple of years ago uh, from Zondat. Um, oh, you have one or two left. Well, yeah, then then send me. Uh, yeah, I want that. Um, just let me know how much, and you know where the, you you know where to send it to. You've got my address. Um, and where was I? Uh, yeah. So the, the, one of the next builds I've got to do is the uh, Nox Reac 75 prototype. This was a board that Zonda designed a little while ago, and then didn't run the group by for. Uh, I'm not sure if it didn't get the interest or not. But I love 75% boards. I've got uh, the Singer, which I adore. Uh, so it was a good addition to my collection. Um, unfortunately, there's some problems with it in production, uh, which I think is part of the reason why the group by didn't go ahead. 
Um, so there was parts of the case that didn't fit together uh, and didn't hold together correctly and some other bits and pieces uh, and the board didn't support ISO either um, oh, burning my mat there um, which was a little bit of a concern for me uh, as well <clears throat> um, but we've got the board uh, Wilbur kindly designed a, uh, a new plate that fits the board uh, and fits its, uh, its top mount capability um, and it supports ISO now, uh, and we've had a new PCB made for it as well because on that's PCB, whilst it supported ISO, didn't have stabiliser standouts for uh, stabiliser cutouts for the ISO enter. So it will be ISO built. Uh, it will be a Noxry X75 ISO, um, and we're going to try and build that on the next stream. Um, the plates arrived for it today. Uh, I've gone for two plate options, uh, and I've got two PCBs as well. So we might do two different streams where we build each one. The first one is going to be a copper plate uh, with a 1U blocker as well. Um, and the second board is just going to be a standard open 75% um, uh, with a brass plate as well, which I've had made from Laser Boost. So I'll show those on stream as well later on if anyone's interested in seeing them. Um, and then if any, anyone is... Uh, uh, has he got any more of those, Jay? I'm kind of interested. The 75, no, you had one prototype made and that was it. That was absolutely it. Uh, yeah, Mousy, I'd, I'd love to see you again. And now you've got your curiosity, I want to see those. I want to see the switches as well, up close that you've done the black and white switches. So I hope those are in those boards. Um, I think they are, if I remember rightly. Uh, DCO one showcase one. I did show it earlier on. I showed it after we'd done the stabbers before we started to solder this board. I will show it again. It's just at the size of me. I'll show it again before uh, before I finish. Um, and I think Pusher has shared the uh, uh, the link to my Imager album as well of some pictures I took in the garden earlier on today of the board. Um, so uh, Pusher, if you want to share that link again or put that link in MKUK, I'm happy for it to be shared around. Um, I think uh, David's going to post it onto Reddit later on, so if you can just hold off slapping it all over Reddit, um, that would be really, really useful. I know who you all are. I will be watching. Uh, Domino's quality check is an absolute myth on the tracker. Yeah, sometimes the Domino's quality myth. Uh, sorry, the Domino's quality checker. Um, I've had it say it's in quality check when the pizza's been in my hands. So I think a lot of the time, a lot of stores just don't scan it at the right stages or whatever they have to do. I assume it's automated. Both of them are complete custom switches for people to toggle over. One's engraved, one's died. Yes, I do want to see the engravings as well, actually. Um, if they are nice as your pictures make them look, I will be getting some done uh, with the name of my Discord server, the J Ground, because um, that would be pretty awesome. I've got some other bits and pieces that have been made for some of my uh, uh, friends that are on that server as well. So um, stay tuned for those as well. They, they should be on stream in a couple of weeks, actually. I should chase up where, where those bits and pieces have got to actually as well. But uh, yeah, I'll do a bit of giveaway for those. Okay, so we're almost finished this row, and then we've got one more row to go. Uh, it's probably good because I'm running out of solder here desperately. So I'm hoping I actually managed to finish soldering this because if I don't, I'll be slightly disappointed. Uh, and I think this is all the solder I've got as well. I best order some more straight after this stream is done. Um, just in case I don't get to see you before I do the next stream, Toby. Almost done. Oh, keycaps falling over in the corner. Just at the meetup as well, um, just so people are aware, uh, on Saturday I'm going to do a bit of a, a talk. I'm going to do a bit of a, a panel guest show uh, where I'm going to ask people some uh, questions uh, around the... Uh, uh, the keyboard community. So we've got some good stand-up members of the community, names that everyone knows uh, that are going to join me on stage uh, and uh, have a bit of a conversation, a bit of a chat, ask them some questions that people in the MK UK community have, uh, have raised before. Do a bit of an interview style type conversational piece. Um, so I'm really looking forward to doing that. Uh, that should be really good fun. Um, there's some good people lined up to do it. Merci, I'll see you on Saturday, dude. Uh, I can't wait to say hi, uh, and if you want to see the DCL one and the other prototypes I'm bringing with me, come and give me a shout out, man. Come and give me a shout out. Where was your invite to what, Scouty? Don't know. 
Uh, Chris Wise is bringing his table. Uh, we've actually emptied the back of my car and we've put down all the seats in preparation for it as well, so just so that we can slide the table in. Um, we're going to put a special cloth down as well because he's really worried about scratching it actually. Um, I think the white part of his table uh, is made of um, something called Corium, which I know the Lumina Group buy is going to use uh, as a basis for the keyboard. So um, we have set out the car nice and simply for that. We've put a nice soft mat down for it. Um, and it does mean that poor Zui is going to sit on the back seat and actually have to have all of our bags on the back seat because they won't fit in the boot with the table. So um, I've got a big car, but it's not that big. Uh, so poor Zui is going to be sat on the back seats with uh, with bags and bags of keyboards. But I'm sure I'll be all right. I'm sure I'll be all right. The panel, the invite for the panel. Well, you'll have to see. There is a couple of surprise guests who are on the panel. Uh, but they are upstanding members of the community, uh, people who are well into the whole design scene, uh, people who are fully aware of got, and have got their fingers on the pulse. Um, I'm pretty sure you'll be happy with them. Um, and Gouty, if you want to join the panel, you are more than welcome to do. If you want to stand up there in front of everyone at the meetup and uh, say a few words, answer a few questions, I'd be more than happy to add you to my roster. Uh, I can think of some very good questions I'd like to ask you, dude. Uh, just in terms of some other things, um, I do have um, uh, some other bits and pieces to give away. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier on, no one managed to get my Reddit quiz correct on my macro pad for my escape keys uh, and name all of them correctly. So the uh, Keyforge um, Artisan that was up for grabs from that is still available and will be given away at the meetup. Not quite sure how we're going to do it yet. Probably names out of a hat. Uh, I'll let Matt uh, and Will decide how they want to do giveaways. Uh, in addition to that, I've got a key set that I'm going to give away. Perhaps two. I haven't decided whether there's going to be two or not. Uh, and the reason for that is because there's potentially uh, uh, going to be some prizes for best in show and a few other bits and pieces. Um, so, yeah, so there might be a couple of key sets to give away. Uh, I won't go into details of what they are, but suffice to say, whoever wins them shouldn't be disappointed. Uh, there'll definitely be one there from me. I know Chris is looking at uh, finding stuff to give away as well, and I think some of the vendors are giving some stuff away. Um, I've also got some lube that will be on offer from Mechboards, uh, some RF59 lube if anyone's interested in that. Uh, it's um, uh, it's good lube, it's really nice, it's some of the, uh, the white colour in the substance. Uh, I'm going to look like a drug dealer taking it around with me, but hey-ho. Um, on the website, it's uh, £7.15 in price. At the meetup, it's just going to be a straight five per vial, 20 millilitres, uh, more than you'll need for a thousand switches, probably. Uh, so, if anyone's interested in that, then yeah. And we've got Glove in the chat, Mr. Artisan Maker himself. Uh, Glove, how are you doing, dude? It's good to see you on my stream. We're actually just about finishing building the board. It's not Stab Lube, James, no, it's Switch Lube. RO59 is Switch Lube. Um, I've got, I think, 10 vials of it, something like that. Uh, but I'd say £5 each uh, from Megboard stock. A bit of a discount for people going to the MK UK meetup. Uh, I think that's actually at a loss as well from uh, from Metbod's price. Is what based PTFE dry lube good for Alps? Yeah, it is good for Alps. Uh, I only have one Alps build uh, lubed with that actually, um, but you're right, it is really really good. Um, there we go. We finished soldering the board. Oh, talking then, and one minute I wasn't I was soldering, the next minute I was done. Uh, yeah, I'll just show you actually. I've got the vials somewhere on here. There you go, so vials of uh, lube, nice and jangly. They'll be, uh, as I say, I think I've got 10. They'll be five pounds each at the meetup. Uh, bargain price for anyone that wants some lube, just come and give me a shout um, and uh, I'll sort it out for you. So that's the, the PCB all soldered up. Uh, it's all fitting together nicely, it's all flush. Um, my camera's making it look a bit bent there, but it's not. Um, so there we go, that's it. So what we're gonna do now is just pop this all together. Uh, look, look how short I was there, I'm almost running out of, uh, Solder. <clears throat> We're going to pop this together now uh, and build the case up. Um, so as I said before, the uh, the canoe, whilst it's a three-part case, actually mounts to the bottom, uh, just like this, <clears throat> instead of the top, which is kind of bizarre. Vials, yes, vials, Toby. So I'm just going to put these in like this. Always when you're putting screws in for something like this. Um, even though keyboard tolerances are really, really tight, always try and go diametrically opposed when you when you're tightening screws. Uh, the reason for that is it just helps you eliminate flex. 
um, it helps you eliminate uh, a number of other bits and pieces, just goes uh, diametrically opposed as you can. I'm just going to put these in finger tight for now and then we'll test the PCB. Uh, the reason is I do have, uh, I wouldn't call it to change, a, oh, uh, a diode that I need to change later on, so I'm not going to tighten this up fully, I'm only going to just tack it together effectively. Yeah, so it's actually the same as uh, same as mine glove. This is for uh, for Daniel uh, off of uh, MK UK, um, but it's the same as mine. I'll show you mine actually. Here we go. So this is what mine looks like fully built, and then that's the colour of the weight on the back as well. One of the big downsides about this board actually is where you put the rubber bump on. There's actually no uh, cutouts for it. Let me show you on the bottom of here. So I've just put mine on where I think they should go. But if you uh, if you look here, you can see there's no no bump ons, no cutouts for the bump ons or anything like that. Uh, and it, it kind of shocked me that I, I was kind of surprised that that's the way it is. But it is the way it is. That's the way it is. Uh, is it flashed or are you going to show us flashing and match it? Uh, I'm not going to flash it tonight. No, I, I don't have to. If I had a longer stream, I would. Now, this is actually uses boot map out of the box, but you can change it to QMK. So I've moved mine onto QMK, which is how I was able to control the caps lock key uh, for the indicator LED. Um, and I am going to convert this one to uh, to QMK for Daniel, um, but it's likely to be uh, tomorrow before I get a chance to do that. Gloves just packing, nice, good. Yeah, I've got half a bag packed down there. Uh, I've got the Anzies pot in there and a few other bits and pieces. Uh, spent 12 months in storage, keys and key bags. Uh, stream flash tonight, all right, I'll, I'll take my top off and do that. How, how, how do you feel about that? Uh, we could do it that way. Um, and we're just gonna bolt this on, and then that's the build done. Just give me one second, turn this over. And again, we're just gonna uh, tack this in. I'm not going to put all of the uh, bits and pieces in. There is some on my door, so I may get shouted away in a second. Is that a wireless doorbell? Yes, I've got a wireless doorbell. Um, I've actually got one that. Uh, pings me on my phone as well. Looks like my wife's coming to tell me about what that was. No order of pizza, have you? I haven't ordered pizza. No, was that was that pizza? Someone ordered pizza for me. Does man have two boxes of pizza? Domino's man. Ah. Oh. He was like, pizza. I was like, not ordered anything. And he was like, this is Duke's family. I was like, yeah, number forty-five. I was like, it's been paid for. I was like, well, it's not ours. You should have said we'd have it if someone's bought us bloody pizza. You might do You don't need anymore. I'm being told off now, folks. Uh, but if someone's ordered me pizza, I, I kind of want the pizza. Go yeah. shout the man back. No one's ordered you pizza. <laughs> He's probably at the wrong address. It, yeah, he probably is at the wrong address. It probably isn't as it's meant for, but uh, it's funny. Toby, you didn't order pizza for my house instead of your own, did you, dude? That might be why it's still in quality check. Okay, so that's the board tacked together. There is two more bolts to go in here, but I've, uh, I've uh, not put them in. Oh, thank you, Chris. You, you can find pizza at any time, dude. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it's just the wrong address, but I like to make the joke. Um, so that's the, it, it kind of tidied up. Um, I'll put the other two bolts in once I've changed the diode later on. It's a small job. It'll take two minutes. Um, it's something I'm going to do in front of the telly. Uh, but here we have the canoe fully built. There we go. That's the, uh, the board built. Um, we're not going to put the... Uh, keycaps on today. I do want to do a little bit of a typing test. Ah, it, oh, Toby's bought me pizza. Ellie, it is for us. Toby's bought us pizza. It is for us. Thank you very much. Toby's bought us pizza. He sent us pizza as a surprise. So just to prove this, folks, Toby, you are an absolute legend. I've got two big stonking pizzas now. Um, <laughs> um, I'm being told I'm not allowed to eat them. <laughs> wow. Uh, so, Ellie, come on here. You've got to answer some questions. You don't have to come on camera, but you've got to come and answer some questions. <laughs> um, 
Ellie, the same, why did you turn the pizza away? Why did you turn the delivery man away? Because we didn't order any pizza. Because <laughs> we didn't order it, she says. Um, but yeah, Toby, you are a gentleman, a scholar, a legend in your own lunchtime. Um, thank you very much for the pizzas. Delivery man, I'm so confused. Even the dog's interested now. We've got Doggo back on stream because she can smell the pizza. Um, I'll be a slice either. <laughs> apparently not allowed a slice. Uh, Toby, you are a gentleman, good sir. Thank you very much for the pizza. Where did you even? How did you even know to which Domino's to order it from? I'm gonna have a look. What have we got? Oh, spicy. That looks good. Spicy pizza. Uh, I don't know what it is, but it's got a little vial of something to put on it. So it's got a vial of uh, spicy stuff to put Chili on it. Oil. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And then the other one. Uh, no, Martin, it's not It's not someone else's. Toby bought it for me. And then uh, what looks like pepperoni, jalapeno, and sausage as well. So, wow. Right, I'm going to get these away from the, uh, the keyboards. Ellie, could you take these downstairs? I'm going to No, apparently I have to take them downstairs myself in a minute. Uh, <coughs> Wife's been uh, selfish. So, uh, 12 and 1 for the shopping. So, uh, <laughs> back to the stream. Wow. Um, back to the stream, back to the stream, back to the stream. So this is the canoe. I'll put a couple of keycaps on it uh, just now. Let me find some keycaps. Uh, some somewhere. Here we go. And then what we'll do is we'll just do a really quick sound test and then I have some pizza for you. <laughs> the wife's telling me that I'm not allowed to, uh, to eat uh, the pizza. So I'm not going to put the right keys on here. I'm just going to try and get broadly the right profile. They're not the right profile at all. I'm just going to pop these on uh, and then do a bit of a typing sound test for you. That's too high. Compare it to mine uh, and then we'll be able to see. So that's enough there for me to be able to do a quick test for you. Uh, but what we've got here is we've got two canoes. Uh, so this one is built with Zelios. This is the one we built on stream today. Uh, it looks really, really nice. A couple of little bits that I need to finish off. Just need to put the little rubber insert that goes behind the light there to diffuse it, which is just here. Uh, and then fix the diode for uh, for Daniel. Uh, and this is mine, which is built with Holy Pandas. So these are Zelios that Mousy's customised. Uh, yeah, roughly the right profile. In other words, I meant there weren't the uh, there weren't the home row or anything like that. There weren't F keys or uh, insert and page up and down those type of sizes. So, anyway, so do a bit of a typing sound test just so you can hear. Uh, let's move this a little bit closer to the microphone so you can hear clearly. So we'll do the Holy Pandas first just so you guys can hear properly. One of my favourite sounds is that it sounds so good. And then this is the Zelios on this board. Bear in mind it's a little bit different because it's not got all the keys on it. Um, they are Xylents, so that's probably why it sounds a little bit mushy. Um, I don't have a Xylent board that I can bring on stream at the minute, I don't think. Uh, I do, I do have a Xylent board. So this is a Xylent board, so probably a better comparison. Um, it's, you can see that this, this case just sounds hollow and the plate sounds poor. This is a tray mount 5 degree. That's the difference it makes. These are PBT keyboard caps and these are ABS. But you can see how it just sounds nice. And that's the difference between a good board and a, and a cheaper end board, in my opinion. Um, uh, it does make a massive difference. But that's the board built. That's the board done. Uh, it will be at the meetup if anyone wants to see it. We'll probably have the two canoes near each other at some point. Uh, there is some slight differences in colour. They're probably not going to show up on stream. Um, my silver is more silver. Uh, this one's a little bit more whitish. Um, yeah, the canoe case sounds amazing. I mean, listen. That's silent, so it's... It just sounds lovely. It just sounds so nice. It's one of my favourite boards to type on. Uh, but it'll be at the meetup, so you can try it out for yourselves. Uh, as I said before, there is some slight colour differences, both in the grey on the bottom uh, and the silver on the top. 
Um, I think I prefer Daniel Silver and my my grey to be honest, but um, yeah, there is there is just some slight differences in the board. The teal is identical. There's no difference on the teal if we can get that in the light, uh, but there is some slight differences in the boards themselves. Uh, but there we go, guys. That is uh, the canoe build. Oh, we'll bring the DC01 back on stream for a second for those of you that missed it. Um, so this is the split keyboard with additional pads uh, from Mechboards. So we have the numpad here and the directional pad. And then we have the, uh, the two halves of the split board just here. So as you can see, magnetized together. Clicky switches, not my choice. Um, now the cool thing about it again is that it's all magnetic so these just connect and that's that now working and connected to the board uh, and then again you can put the numpad on the other end and then there you go that's the board works like that so it's all nice and smooth it's nice and flush at the back um, the other thing that you can do as well which is really really cool uh, these move around so you can quite easily put this on here oh. That board all works like that. You can then separate it, have two cables, one for power, one to connect with two halves. Use it like this, move it around, use it like this. Again, one cable in here, does the job. One to connect with two halves. You can hear the magnets there, there you go, that's magnet circuit. So that would then work as a full split board. Uh, moving it around is not terrible. No, it's 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 nice and easy. The, the one thing that yeah, I'm making a bit of an improvement to is the magnets. So you you you, you, you can hear the magnets connecting it together. Um, they do need to be a little bit stronger. And they've got one in the middle at the moment. They're going to put one in the middle, one at the top as well, just so it's got a bit more rigidity holding it together. Um, but yeah, it, it's absolutely stunning. And uh, pushes shared the, a link to my uh, image stream with some pictures on. I will share them pictures again as well. Um, just so everyone can see them. They're going to be up on Keep Talk later on as well. Uh, this is absolutely stunning board. Uh, Jim K Nautilus. Um, oh, I can also show you SA Nautilus as well. So this is the CA66 I built on stream a week or so ago, and this is SA Nautilus on that on that board, which is lovely. Uh, what switches on the DC01? The DC01 has has uh, kale gold switches in um yeah so you can hear the noise difference actually it's just because there's less air in the middle to reverberate sound around um and on the production version that's going to be fixed anyway because this is to sound a little bit hollow but that's going to be fixed on there um, there's going to be a bit of padding in behind it um so yeah so that's again the dc01 uh amazing board taking some really nice pictures I'll, uh, I'll share those with you guys uh, as well. Uh, if anyone wants the link, it'll be up on Keep Talk and it'll be up on Top Clack and it'll be up on um, uh, MKUK as well. And this is the ANSI board. Again, this is a polycarbonate board by uh, uh, Amth uh, Max, who runs Cable Car Designs. Uh, it's got tangerine switches in C3. Sounds amazing. Uh, it's got a lovely weight in the bottom. Uh, really nice board, probably one of the best boards I've I've seen as a product time. Um, my dog's trying to get in the peak for the GG. No. Um, this is probably one of the best boards I've, I've seen in this layout and size. I really love it. Uh, the finish is unfinished completely, just so we could see where all the tooling marks were and the paths it was taken. So the final version will be uh, sandblasted to have a lovely even finish. And if anyone wants to see that sort of finish, you'll see it on my polycarbonate singer at the meetup as well. But there we go, that's the, the two teasers, that's the canoe build, nice easy build today, uh, nothing too strenuous, a little bit to fix on it uh, before I can hand it over to Daniel. Uh, there was pizza on stream as well, thank you Toby, you are a legend man, I really appreciate that, so thank you. Uh, I'm going to go and eat that even though my wife tells me I'm not allowed to. Um, and I think we're going to finish the stream there, but thank you very much for watching folks, uh, it was great to see you. Uh, next time we'll be back with the Nox React 75 prototype build with a copper 2mm plate uh, and Sky Utamu switches, um, so that'll be up next week or so, probably in the middle of the next week I would imagine that's when we'll be on then. Um, so good night folks, thanks very much, I'm off to stuff my face full of pizza and I'll be eating it for breakfast as well no doubt. Um, so thank you very very much for your time today um, and I'll check you all out soon and if you do want to hit me up for a chat hit me up on Keep Talk, uh, J3 Soteric, MKUK, any Discord channel that you want uh, and I'd love to talk to you all. See you later folks, I'll see you all on Saturday if you're about and if you are do come say hi, don't be shy, um, I'd love to say hi so yeah I'll, uh, I'll see you then.
See ya.